It sounds to me like you don't really feel like you have any limitations, which is really great. And I kind of attribute that kind of in part to your parents always being encouraging to you. Plus you've got this job where, you know, you're kind of in this environment that's obviously you're immersed in art. You're working with Nick, you're, you're yes. talking to, you know, people in art to life and it's kind of like a very full bodied and encouraging, nurturing environment. So totally. what about artists who don't have that though? What would be your recommendation to those people? <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's a, that's a very good question. And I, I think that, um, First of all, there is no magic bullet, um, but uh, two things. First is like one I would recommend, uh, and Nick has said this, and you know probably every other successful creative person would say this as well. Like you just you have to get to the point where you're creating like for yourself. First of all, like you don't like for, forget about what like getting accolades or like positive or negative feedback like you just you have to get to the point where your practice is like a core like part of who you are you know it's the thing that makes you happy and you got you got to get that and that and that you know that that happens through um repetition is what it is you know um, so those ten thousand hours in exactly. a way right yeah, yeah exactly exactly things are always hard in the beginning because you don't know what you're doing and it's easy to get discouraged but if you stick with it like the answers i know it sounds corny to say this but the answers will reveal themselves to you you know you'll yeah. figure you'll figure it out what it is you're trying to do with your work um oh go ahead so i was just curious like if um in your trajectory as an artist you've had like some pretty big aha moments because a lot of artists will talk about that where they had a significant something happened in their lives or they learned something and all of a sudden you know it it was kind of a, a life changer or a um something that really impacted your art can mm -hmm. you think of any times when that really happened for you you know i think part of it was so this is a, again um i feel like i just give these tangential answers but i can't help no, it. No. <laughs> it they relate <laughs> Um, I think part of it was that because I've, because I've always been painting and drawing and like always taken art classes, you know, since I was a kid, I kind of looked at it with like a, a little bit of like, um, kind of took it for granted a little bit, you know, and I didn't treat it with the respect that it, it deserved. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't really until I would say two years ago that I really started taking it seriously. Um, I think part of that was like, I was in a, a band with my brother and that didn't work out. And kind of when that fell apart, I was like, well, what do I have? Like, what's, what else can I do to like feed that creative, you know, urge in me that like it has, I, I am, I am a markedly better and more pleasant person when I'm, when I've been like painting or creating or like playing music or something like that, you know? So, right. so when that, when that ended, when that the whole band thing fell apart, um, I was like, well, I got to, what, what can I do here to like sate that urge? And right. um, it's like, well, okay, I've always done this. Like, why don't I actually like, instead of just doing it like once in a while and be like, well, I'm pretty good at this, but let's actually like really do an honest dive into it. And like really, uh, really like try and make this a thing. Um, right. So it wasn't necessarily a, a specific instance. It was more kind of like a, like a chain of events is really what it was. Kind of like in your own mind, you decided that it's time to get serious now. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Ex that's exactly right. That's exactly Very right. And, cool. Yeah. And also it's like, I'm, you know, I'm still young. I'm 32. It's like, I would, I would like to be able to look back on like this time. If I'm lucky enough to grow old, you know, be like, I used that time wisely. Like that wasn't, right. you know, and plus yeah. it's like, you can only go to so many bars before like, I think I'm just going to the same bar over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this well it sounds to me like you know you might like the bar scene but you're just as happy in your studio painting so yeah. it sounds like to me the the studio thing is pulling you in and it you're is. saying okay that's great so yeah, yeah. it is so yeah. so to answer your, your earlier question like how to what about artists who don't have or creatives who don't have that community that you know you have with art to life is um one get your art practice dialed in and then two uh, art, like the internet is amazing. It really is. Um, and I would recommend that you start looking for communities online, looking for places where you can find that feedback that you need. Um, I know that it sounds, it's 
sounds a little weird saying you're going to find some sort of authentic experience through a digital medium, but um, just again, just from working with Nick and, you know, seeing how you've progressed and like how you're building your own community now, um, it's definitely possible. And you, it's, it's not only possible, but you can find like some people who will really have your back and you know, some people who will keep you on track. Right. Um, and the third thing I would also say is like immerse yourself as much as you can. Like, so if like, if there's a, you know, go to your gallery, if you don't have a, you know, if, even if there's like a small little coffee shop or something that has like an art opening or something like go to it, you know, right. take right. the time to like figure out the people in your community who are, who are other painters, who are other creatives, like reach out to them. You know, a lot of times I think people are, they think that they kind of exist just on an Island unto themselves. Um, and while that is, depends on where you live. I think that may be more or less true, but no one is totally alone. You know, there That's are, true. you know, there are venues. Yeah, I mean, here you are in San Francisco. I'm in a very small town and I can definitely yeah. see that you're right. Because if I want to go and, you know, go to a gallery or whatever, it's not that far away. Yeah. But um, what kind of, uh, I mean, advice in terms of, you know, a lot of artists like you, I guess, mentioned, you're not real keen on the marketing end of it. So it can be a little overwhelming at first. And yes. I definitely went through that myself. I yeah. had to teach myself a lot of things. But do you have any recommendations for how an artist who's interested in marketing themselves, aside from Instagram and going to galleries mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. what, are, what are some great learning tools, learning resources, websites, classes? Um, that sure. you uh, okay, so in terms of just learning how to, how to market yourself, um, you know, there's one thing that I would actually uh, learn how to photograph your work properly first. Right. That's, and how do they learn? How do they learn how to do that? That's huge. Um, YouTube is an amazing resource. Like it really, it's it, it's it's mind blowing how much great um, content is out there. Like just, that's true. Just tutorial content. Um, and even if you have just an iPhone, most unless you have like a really really old one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in which case, I can't help. <laughs> but um, right. <laughs> um, and even a really old one. But if like most iPhones, especially the newer ones, that the resolution on those it's amazing yeah, you can they get, are amazing yeah you can get yeah. amazing photos with your with your iphone um so so yeah so i would learn how to photograph your work properly you can learn there's a just literally if you just type in youtube uh photography tutorials you're going to find a bunch of stuff also it helps if you can narrow that search down by typing you know typing what kind of camera you have right because um, every camera's settings are a little bit different um and that was another thing I learned while I was working with Nick. Like I learned how to photograph his work. Um, I learned how to, you know, film. I've, I mean, I've gotten pretty handy with using the, a camera. Um, and for the purpose of you know, shooting your own work, if you honestly, if you spent like maybe four to five hours of like teaching yourself how to do it, play around with it a little bit, um, you'd be surprised how quickly you can learn how to like take a good photograph of your work. Um, right. Uh, on that, on heels of that, you know, very important to learn how to use Photoshop or some kind of photo editing software. Uh, you don't have to, and again, this is the other thing too, like none of these are like, just like with art in general, like none of these are like concrete rules. Like you can, there's always exceptions, right. of course, right. but learning how to photograph your work is one and then learning how to use some kind of photo editing software. Yeah, because you need to crop it and make sure it's totally. square lighting. Totally. Exactly. And if you're going to submit anything online or, or if you're going to submit anything to a gallery, they want to know that you have um, some kind of basic understanding of like the mechanics of what it means to be an artist, you know? Right. Um, so now again, if you're, if you're, if you're able to hire a professional photographer, that's, that's awesome. That's fantastic. But for a lot of people starting out, um, they don't have those resources. Um, hiring a professional photographer can be incredibly expensive, you know? Uh, so I, I would, I, I'm a huge advocate of just, I think you are as well, like teaching yourself how to do it, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, um, so that's, that's crucial. Um, another thing that I would recommend doing is uh, starting a relationship with the galleries that you like. Mm -hmm. um, send them an email, maybe with some of your, maybe, you know, one or two pieces or one or two photos of like your most recent painting, something that you're really proud of. Um, you can actually just like drop it right 
in the actual email body itself. You don't have to even attach right. it to the file. Now, again, right. you're going to send out a hundred of these and you might get two responses. Mm -hmm. um, but that's okay. That's like, like that's, yeah. that's kind of like how it starts in the beginning. It's this sort of slow burn. Um, yeah. So, you know, talk, like send an email to your local gallery um, in the, in the headline or in the subject line, uh, say something like, I, you know, you're, say, mention something about the last show they had, something like that. Um, something that's going to grab that gallerist's attention. Yeah. You know, cause you have to understand like these people, they're just sitting around all day. <laughs> like, <Right>. like, like <laughs> and, and it's, you know, I think Nick has said this before and I'm sure you have as well. Like they're, they're, um, they're trying to sell, they're basically like shopkeepers is what they are. And I don't mean that in, in a, in a, uh, a trite way like there right. it's a retail space is what it is and it's a very right. high-end retail product that you're trying to sell sure. um and a lot of you know most galleries you'll find that they have, like to have personal relationships with the artists that they represent yeah. um so doing that now introducing yourself even if you think you're not ready mm -hmm. just do it anyway just, yeah you've got nothing to lose right exactly you have nothing to lose and the experience will be um gratifying even if they don't respond it will be it's, it's very, it's always a nice feeling to know that you're like, okay, I'm actually doing something for myself. Yeah. You know, it's I like think a, that's a, a really good point. It's not about uh, really whether you get accepted or rejected or you get a positive or negative response. It's like, you can say, wow, I got out a hundred emails today. I feel pretty darn good. Right? Right, right. It's not because ultimately it's really with galleries on, um, you know, it's really usually one person's opinion. And mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Um, you know, when you consider how many people they get, emails or any kind of mail from mm -hmm. I mean and you know I, I think it's interesting that you talk about contacting galleries via email because I, I somehow I feel like there's a real etiquette uh, it's either it's kind of like one of those things that some galleries feel it's right to do it this way or it's wrong to do it that way it's not like there's a manual but there's almost like this um, understood way to contact a gallery of course and I think that you know, my dad always said something that said this. He's like, well, let them say no. Like, don't, right, don't, right. don't count yourself. And, and you're right. It will be different from gallery to gallery. Some, sure. you know, if you're contacting like a uh, Gagosian or something like that, they probably will not <laughs> respond to you. <laughs> but, but, you know, there's a, there's, um, that's one of the great things about, you know, sort of the internet age is that you, right. we are starting to see um, a, a re-emerging interest in what's called uh, like, two-dimensional more like two-dimensional painting uh art and i don't think we'll ever see a move away from like conceptual based art that's something that's always going to be here but because of things like instagram and facebook there is an emergence a re-emergence in the interest of like painting um and i think that you're starting to see more in san francisco it's a bit of a cautionary tale but you're starting to see Gallery starting to pop up again. Um, I remember good. like, you know, That's good. you look at like the heyday of like art galleries from like the seventies when there was like art galleries everywhere and then it kind of shrunk yeah. down a little bit. Now mm -hmm. we're starting to see them build up a little bit more. Um, right. So there's definitely venues out there for, for your work to, to be seen, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and on that note, I would also say, uh, you know, learning how to, um, it, I think depending on, some people say this is a bad thing, but you do need to have some kind of social media presence. And maybe that's just limited to Instagram. Maybe that's, that's fine. And, and in fact, a lot of um, popular contemporary artists, they just have an Instagram account and they have, sometimes they have a Facebook account, but they usually don't, you know, they kind of neglect that. Instagram is like the thing for showing off thing. images. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of times galleries, that is how they will, not all the time, but sometimes they will, they will look at your Instagram feed and yeah. Um, they'll look at how many followers you have and also look at your work as well. It's like their first introduction to your work. Um, right, right. So I building up your Instagram that. account. Um, and then, you know, uh, one of the things that, that Nick either. does, uh, which is super helpful, I'm actually in the process of putting my own together right now, is once you have a body of work that you're pleased with, like I would say, let's just 10 is a good round number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, put together a little booklet for yourself, like a hard copy. Right. And send right. that out to the galleries that you like. Yeah. Um, awesome. Because that, that is like, that's another great way to just separate yourself from the rest of right. the pack. Most, most do not do that, right? They send no, they a cover letter, maybe a few images on a disc or whatever. Yeah. Um, do you have any favorite places where you'd get your copies made? Because 
There's Blurb and Shutterfly and, you know, all kinds of other ones. Yeah. yeah you know. So Smart for Us is the one that I like. Um, Blurb, of course. There's also this one called Isu. That's I-S-S-U-U dot com. That's a good one. Um, now, there's, that, now, these are, um, you're only going to pay for the pamphlet that is actually printed. There, right. there are a couple other services where you pay a subscription fee. And what, what they do is they actually give you uh, a pre-made template that you can just sort of drag and drop photos into. Right. Um, the name is escaping me right now, but if you, if you look up uh, pamphlet um, templates online, hmm. some, some, some results will come up for you. Okay. Um, one thing about these books, and this goes back to the whole learning thing, uh, they, unless you get one that has like a pre-made template right. um, in it, you will have to design it yourself. Yeah, um, that's too much for most people, right? It's well, you know, I, I, I don't think it is actually. I think that mm. if, if, yeah, I, I think that if you are willing to, again, this is, you know, learning how to use InDesign. InDesign is, again, it's made by Adobe and that's sort of the standard yes. for book layouts. Right. Um, it, if, you, if, if someone spent like three hours learning how to use the basics of InDesign, um, mm -hmm. you could totally do this yourself. Awesome. You know, and that's, and I, um, I'm not the best in design user, but uh, so I had to do a little research and sort of train myself how to do it. Um, but it's definitely possible. And then once you learn how to do it too, it's like, yeah, it's, again, it's just like one more, like, feel learned, right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's yeah. the other thing too, is like, as a, if you're going to be, and I'm discovering this still, like, if you're going to be an artist, like the more things you know how to do yourself, like the better off you're going to be. Yeah, that is so true. You know? It's the only way, I mean, to me, uh, I don't think any of us can really afford to hire out a photographer and, you know, a person who's going to be doing yeah. everything that we want them to do, right? So the yeah. more we can do, the better it is, for sure. And yeah. Uh, yeah. No, there's, yeah, there's a tutorial for everything. It's really just, just like with the painting process. It's like if you actually, like, there's that beginning stage where you're like, ugh, this is awful. And then if you just stick with it, like, right. you actually start to, like, get a rhythm to these things, yeah. Yeah. you know? Um, so what else, what other things for, for marketing yourselves? Um, you know what I would say, just stick with those as a, as a start. That's actually very good. Yeah. yeah that's are... actually more than most people probably do already. I'm guessing. Pro um, yeah, probably. But those, but it's, it's good to know there's other things you, you can do. Yeah. You know? yeah. Is, I don't consider myself uh, anything close to what you're doing as far as marketing, but I, I have had to learn things on my own. And what I think I've taught myself to do is find people like you mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or whatever. There's some great companies um, and I'm going to list them on my website because what I'd like to do through Art and Success is allow people to have access to whatever it is that is going to be the best resource to help them learn how to mm -hmm. take care of themselves. You know, instead of hiring somebody, um, a lot of this they can learn, but a lot of times they don't know where to go. They don't yes. know where to look. They don't know the keywords, right? So, yeah. well, I so appreciate your time. Oh, for sure. I'm honored. <laughs> oh, thank you for, uh, yeah, thank you for asking. This is actually, this is a lot of fun. It went by really fast. Yeah. <laughs> it did. I'm <laughs> like, whoa, it's already 2.30? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, though. And I wish you the, all the best with your career. Oh, thank you, Pamela. And, you know, maybe your band will pick up again. You get <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, Ferris, for your time. For sure. All right, Pamela. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.